Erlang, a functional fault-tolerant programming language and runtime famous for scaling up the entire telecommunications industry with its bare hands. It was developed in 1986 at Swedish company Ericsson, where massive concurrent systems were needed to handle millions of phone calls in parallel. Early implementations were written in Prolog, but that was too slow, and that led to the development of Beam, a virtual machine that compiles Erlang to bytecode, which is then executed in a threaded environment where millions of processes can run concurrently with very low overhead. But when your code breaks a process, the Erlang philosophy is to let it fail, so the entire system doesn't come crashing down. That process isolation is what makes it fault tolerant. In addition, this facilitates hot code swapping at runtime to perform software updates with zero downtime. In the late 90s, the Erlang ecosystem was open sourced as the Open Telecom platform, and the Beam VM is still in use today by modern languages like Elixir and Gleam. And Beam has helped messaging tools like RabbitMQ, Discord, and WhatsApp handle billions of messages every day. And that's all thanks to a programming model based on message passing that works just like your mailbox. To understand Erlang's legendary concurrency model though, we need to look at some code, get started by installing it, then create a file ending in .erl. First declare a module, then write a function that contains one or more expressions separated by commas. Just like a sentence, the function ends when you hit a period. Then export the function from the module, and notice this slash zero here that indicates the function takes zero arguments. Now open the terminal and run Erl C to compile this code into a beam file. And now we can use Erl to open the Erlang shell and execute this code. Pretty cool, but now let's run the same function a thousand times concurrently. In this function, we'll use spawn, one of Erlang's concurrency primitives, that executes each function independently on its own process, and returns a process ID for each one of them. The double bars here will map those IDs to a new list. Now when we execute this code, we get a lot more hello worlds, and an array of their process IDs. Where this concurrency model really shines though is with message passing. In this example, the start function spawns a new process, then passes it to the sender function. From there we can use a bang, which is called the send operator, to send a message to itself with self, or some other process ID. We can then handle that message in another function that implements a receive block, which allows a process to suspend execution until a message is received in its mailbox. It uses pattern matching to look for the process ID and message, then executes code when the message is received. Conceptually, receive is kind of like a wait in C Sharp or JavaScript. However, it blocks the entire process until a message is received. Therefore, we might want to add an optional after clause to run some code after a timeout. This has been Erlang in 100 seconds. Let me know what you want to see next in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.